So, hot take. Yes. I like Muppets from Space. <laughs> you can't throw that at me out of nowhere and expect me to be able to handle it emotionally. Do you dislike Muppets from Space like everyone else? Of course I dislike else? Muppets in Space. It's terrible. I like it. It's so fun. bad. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. It is the last of what I consider pure Muppet Muppet movies. Okay. The modern stuff, um, kind of the like... Uh, the reboot. The, the reboot. Mm-hmm. Um, those were in... The first one was enjoyable. The second mm-hmm. one was just awful. No, it wasn't. But it was great. Not, uh... But it started wrong. I got a hobby horse here. Okay. We, we got something. I actually think the second Muppet um, reboot... Well, not up to the caliber of some of the old ones, right? Mm-hmm. Right, like it's no great Muppet caper. Yeah, um, I think it's a legit good Muppet movie. But here's my thing, and maybe maybe it's not for you. It took the whole movie to get me back after the opener, um, and this is actually one of uh, we've talked about this before. It's one of the er examples of what I call the Newt principle. Okay. Um, which I think I've mentioned before, so I won't go into too much depth, mm-hmm. but um, Aliens, the movie, yeah. is all about Ripley saving Newt, Newt mm-hmm. and and the dude, right? It's like Rip, Ripley yeah. becoming a protector um, as the expert of these aliens and stepping into the role of fighting for people. This mm-hmm. is like what she spends the whole movie doing. It's her arc, and she accomplishes it by saving Newt. Newt. Yeah. Um, Alien 3 starts with Newt having died in between yeah, off movies screen. off screen. Mm-hmm. Um, and when you do something like that, you undermine your previous story so much that then you have to play catch up the rest of the way. And this is one of the your examples. The Muppets 2. Muppets of the Ruby, Most Wanted. Most, most Wanted. It undermined all the emotional investment we've given to the first movie. By making it, uh, if you remember the opening scene, they pretend that the two human characters in the previous one, um, um, trying to remember the actors. Yeah, but, um, Seth something? And yeah, but it pretends they were actors in a Muppet thing and none of their emotional journey happened. Mm. And just checks out, right? I just yeah. immediately checked out. Um, but the actual story of like a fake Kermit imitating Kermit poorly and the jokes of that and real Kermit being in a gulag is actually really funny. It works in a classic Muppet manner, huh. but, and the songs are actually good. Tina Fey is great in it. Um, like everything about that movie should work if it didn't kick us out and ruin it in the opening by like singing, we're going to do a sequel. Yeah. These characters didn't matter. This will be better and uh, bigger and better. And everyone's just checked out because we're like, we had a really emotional journey with these two new characters, these human, you know, the human character and his Muppet um, mm-hmm. brother. Yeah. And now that, that that's meaningless. It doesn't. And I think, I think it's new principle. Okay. I think if you watched it again and pretended you didn't have any emotional investment in those, you will seriously enjoy so, so what you're saying yeah. is I have to actually finish it this time. Yeah. Because I checked out after, I think yeah. I gave it 40, 45 minutes because okay. I hated it so much. Yeah. If you skip the opening and pretend it's just a classic <laughs> Muppet movie, like it's a good premise. Let's replace Kermit with a fake Kermit. And it's really obviously a fake Kermit, but no one else can tell. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's funny. It's just, okay. it's classic Muppets hijinks. And let's put real Kermit in a in a Russian gulag and have him figure out how to escape. Okay. It's, a Russian it, gulag run by Tina Fey. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which should work. I yes. was so disappointed to hate that movie as much as I did. So I think okay. I think it's all in setup. That's really so what I think it is. So what's your pitch for Muppets in Space then? I hadn't seen the, a Muppet movie in a while and I think Gonzo is funny <laughs> and I think um, the Pepe the Prawn is funny. Um, and it just kind of, I saw it at 2 a.m. Uh, with my friends. The, it wasn't 2 a.m. It was like midnight, yeah. last showing at the theater. Mm-hmm. And we just laughed uproariously the entire time. Hmm. And every time I see that movie now, I remember that wonderful experience. Of, yeah. of, see, part of my problem yeah. with it is, uh-huh. A, I don't think Pepe the Prawn is funny. Okay, if you don't like Pepe the Prawn, then that movie, yeah. that just movie's right like- right off the bat. Yeah. Hey, it's our new character. He's really funny. Do oh. you like him? Yeah, I I don't think he is funny. Mm-hmm. I am astonished when other people think he is funny. Okay. Um, 
Also, I thought that as much as I love Gonzo, Mm -hmm. it ruined Gonzo. It didn't let him be chaotic and weird. It tried to come up with reasons why his chaotic weirdness was actually very normal and meaningful. It tried to give him an emotional arc. Yeah, it took a lot of his uh, flavor and texture away and kind of flattened him in terms of characterization. I'm okay with that to an extent because, like... I like how, like, the Muppet movies have done that for all the other characters, right? Mm. The Muppet show, they're just... Yeah, they they don't really have characters in yes. the Muppet show. They just are archetypes. They're the archetypes, and they're, they're everyone's chaos, and Kermit keeps them together. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the first Muppet movie is like, no, 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 we're going to delve into backstory and give actual characters to, you know, to Kermit and to Fozzie. And um, then as the the movies continue, as we do Muppets Take Manhattan and The Great Muppet Caper, we do that more and more. And so when we get to Muppets from Space, Gonzo's kind of been left out of this and he's always wanted, (laughs) right? The the movie Gonzo Mm -hmm. has kind of always wanted this, even without stating it. TV Gonzo, no. But movie Gonzo, it's like everyone's getting depth and backstory and characterization, and they're becoming um, different people, well, yeah. Muppets, through the course of the movies, mm-hmm. That it, where you're getting these emotional moments, which you don't really get in the show. It's yeah. not about connecting it's to about Herm- Kermit, yeah. you know, and his and big dreams and uh, friendship and all of this stuff and the movies are and so I'm okay with it right mm-hmm. I'm okay with jumping into that and then alternating hopefully we didn't get any more but with things like Muppet Treasure Island and uh, Muppet Christmas Carol where it's like now the Muppets are actors in doing this and they can just be their archetypes and funny because the emotional beats yeah. can be the human characters that they're playing off of um, and I'm. T- does that make sense? Like, I'm okay no, with... I, it, it, yeah. it makes sense, and I can see where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, it didn't land properly. Mm-hmm. Uh, even in the first Muppet movie, uh, yeah. Gonzo has the song, right? Yes. I'm going to go back there someday, yeah. which is incredibly touching and meaningful. Mm-hmm. And by the time we get to Muppets in Space, those same emotions coming from him just come off very maudlin to me. I can um, see that. I and can so, accept that. Yes, they were trying to give him depth and give him a real character. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, it didn't work, and they just kind of took his uniqueness away. Uh The spark that made him interesting was gone, Um, but oh well. I really could have, like, what a... a what a wonderful world it would have been if we would have had (laughs) more Jim Henson, Mm -hmm. and we would have had a couple of Muppets Treasure Island type movies Kind followed of a literary by classic yeah, Muppet edition. Followed by a here's the Muppets going through their own character arcs and growing as people, and then going back to and now they can be silly again, and we can do um, Muppet Pride and Prejudice like we joked about in one of our yeah. early episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, like uh, what? What a wonderful yeah. world that would have been. It's 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 an interesting thing to think about because mm-hmm. I think for the most part, yeah. the Muppets are more interesting when they are just being weird and goofy. okay um kermit is the exception to that he's a straight man so he has he, to he is the yeah. straight man he is the one who i'm willing to accept him as a character and everyone around him as an archetype uh because we get to see his growth in the first one mm-hmm. and then in uh, muppets take manhattan it's basically the same story again but broadway this time yep uh here's the earnest one Mm-hmm. And his whole thing is about being earnest and trying to create art for the world. And everyone around him is just kind of weird. So, but I think Fozzie has legit character moments and things as well, right? For example? Um, so he's becoming a friend with, with Kermit, right? Like yeah. their first meetings and things like that. Like these are, yes, he's participating in Kermit's story. Mm-hmm. Um and stuff like that, but I don't know. Maybe it's just because I can see like um see beyond to Frank Oz and like see their characters as they the two actors play off of each mm-hmm. other. Um, I just I see a little bit more there 
Yeah. But you're right. I don't want, like, whatever the guy who throws hmm. fish is, I don't want his backstory. New Zealand. Yeah. I don't want his, I don't want a, a deep thing for him <laughs> and character journey. Yeah. Um, you know, it. now that we're talking about it in these terms, uh, we do get into some of these other characters and we yeah. and we learn more about them. But I think Kermit and Gonzo, because of Muppets in Space, yeah. might be the only ones who are POV main characters. Right, who have a backstory and s- stuff yeah. like that too, yeah. Um, See, I could, I, I could, but we, we've gone around in circles on that one. <laughs> um, let's, let's uh, kind of go a different direction on this. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your opinion on, what's your opinion on the, the two kind of great literary classic ones that we got? Um, I know they did another one that was like a TV movie and I haven't seen it. What is it? What did they do? I'm trying to remember. I, I think they I feel did like Treasure it, Island. They did uh, Christmas Carol. Christmas Carol. Those are the two I'm talking about. Yeah. Like, what are your opinions on those? Um, I I am on record as being the one a hole who doesn't really love Muppet Christmas Carol. Wow. Um, it wow. was not a part of my childhood, so I have no nostalgia mm-hmm. for it. I was an adult by the time it came out. Um, and it. I don't know. It it's not my favorite Christmas Carol adaptation. I don't dislike it. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was a few years ago when I realized everyone else other than me absolutely loves and reveres it. Whereas mm-hmm. for me, it's solidly mid tier Muppets. Okay. Um, it is not a, a must see Christmas movie for me. It's just kind of oh I mean, yeah, they made this thing. I don't have must see movies, so I'm not gonna you know. Um, <laughs> But I really like it. Um, I I I think the music's mm-hmm. good. Uh, yeah. I think it's Michael Caine, right? Like it's Michael, Michael Caine. Caine is just such a good Scrooge, and he leans all the way into it. Yeah. Um, he is acting as if everyone else was a human actor around him. He doesn't pretend like he's yep. in a Muppet movie. Yep, and, and that that's works. what always makes it work, mm-hmm. right? Um. But uh, yeah, like Charles Grodin in uh, Great Muppet Caper, mm-hmm. falling in love with Miss Piggy. Yeah. At no point is he like, these are Muppets. This is weird. No, he treats it like a real thing. Um, so yeah, there's, like I said, there's things I like about it. There's things that don't. I actually don't like the music very much. Okay. But you know, the Albert Finney musical Scrooge is my favorite version of Christmas Carol. Okay. And this is a is a pale shadow in comparison. Okay. That is absolutely a minority opinion, but... Well, I mean, we people come here for your bad takes, so <laughs> um, sound off in the comments if you come here for Dan's bad takes. Yeah. Um, uh, and Muppet Treasure Island mm-hmm. uh, is about the same okay. for me. Like, uh, it's, it's mid-tier Muppets. It's not terrible. It has some really great jokes. Mm-hmm. Um, it does some fun things that I think are cool. Yeah. Uh, Tim Curry is phenomenal in it. I have not seen a bad Tim Curry performance, so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. No one can chew scenery like Tim Curry. <laughs> uh, and he he chews it well. Mm-hmm. Um, I need to show that one to my kids. I haven't, I, I think they would enjoy that one. They've seen, they, they've really only seen Christmas Carol because we've turned that on for them. They haven't, they haven't seen any of the, the old classics. Yeah, so. see, I just... Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, finally got around to showing my kids uh, Muppets Take Manhattan. Okay. And they enjoyed it. They didn't love it. What's, uh, what's your favorite of the three originals? Muppet Caper. Okay, that's my favorite also. I, I think that's absolutely mm-hmm. the, the, the best top-tier Muppet movie it of all time. It has the best structure, and it mm-hmm. has the wildest performances, and yeah. it has the, the real... The ending is just so... So insane. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The uh, running gag of Fozzie and Kermit being twins and yes. people can't tell them apart is so brilliant it and is so really funny. good. Yeah. Uh, and very subtly laced throughout. Mm-hmm. Uh, that That's my favorite one. Um, I do have to say my 12-year-old, mm-hmm. uh, he dropped an absolute solid joke a couple days after we watched Muppets Take Manhattan. Uh-huh. Uh, because he thought it was so funny that they have the big giant wedding at the end of that one, and it's uh, ostensibly part of a Broadway show. And then a couple of days later, we were talking about something else completely different, uh, and I made a joke that one of the guys that my daughter likes, my my 17-year-old, 
looks kind of like a Muppet. And Lincoln, out of nowhere, he said, oh, well, if you marry her, that's going to be expensive because Muppet weddings are huge. And I was like, dude, that is that is an A-plus callback reference. I was very proud. Um, there's a really good uh, um, documentary on YouTube about Jim Henson's life. Mm. Uh, it's told in, um, I think it was Defunct Land who made it, which is, that uh, it's a theme park YouTube channel. Yeah. But that is, as a lot of YouTube channels as they've, they've aged and grown, have gotten successful and added production value and added production value and added production value to the point that they did a whole sequence. Um, it's like a an, a six half hour episode sequence of, um, of um, documentaries on Jim Henson's life. That's cool. Um, and it's fantastic. Highly recommend it. Uh, it added a whole lot of new context to me, mm -hmm. uh, for me, about all of this and kind of his aspirations. And I'd always imagined Jim Henson is like, puppets are the thing. This is what I'm all about. And it wasn't. Um, puppets were the means by which he was doing the things he wanted to do. But he had really grand aspirations. And he kind of almost fell into using puppets to get there. Mm. Um, and you know, he was, he was definitely more Lucas like in that regard yeah. than I knew. Well, okay. Then let's talk about the kind of non Muppet Muppets. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Labyrinth and Dark Crystal. Yeah. Um, what, what are, what are your thoughts on I those? love them both. Um, like Dark Crystal, uh, is so cool. Mm hmm. And, um, like we got so few in the eighties legit epic fantasy stories. And the ones that we did get, the special effects just could not live up to the dreams of the filmmakers. And this is in part because um no one would give them the budgets because of yeah. this. And so the few that were really good that and, and worked were were treasures to me. Yeah. As a as a young man. Uh speaking basically like there's really only of epic fantasy, Dark Crystal and then Willow in the 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 early 90s late yeah. uh late 80s whenever that happened when you got like hey, it can actually work. And mm -hmm. even like Kroll and Beastmaster and stuff, I would watch because it's yeah. like oh, it could be Clash of the Titans, yes. mm -hmm. all these things that were almost what I wanted, yeah, but not quite. Dark Crystal, um, you know that th that's when Henson was working with Brian Froud, mm -hmm. uh, and he, their combined world building and the freedom because they're working with puppets rather than human actors to just be able to show the weirdest things that didn't look like bad effects, yeah because they were all so cohesive, they fit together so well. Having the main characters also be puppets instead of humans surrounded by all these weird things yep. was absolutely the right thing because then it all looked like yeah. a and cohesive it's, whole. I mean, the world building's legit cool. Like mm -hmm. the, um, the, the Skeksis are easy to remember the name, but I think the other ones are just called something like, uh, like, monks or it's no, like so they it's had like a real they thing. had a name but there's like they're like mystics or mystics, they're yeah. yeah like it's just some real word yeah and then you've got this cool fantasy world word for the other so yeah <laughs> um but the the idea of the good and evil having been split apart and needing to be rejoined mm -hmm. uh, against the evil's desires and the uh you know draining life force to stay young and all of this stuff uh it was just you yeah, know, visually arresting, but also worked really well as an interesting epic epic fantasy yeah, the, premise. The, the story was great. Mm -hmm. um, did did you watch the Dark Crystal Age of Resistance? Or I whatever? did, and it didn't work for me, despite it being like technically amazing. Mm -hmm. It, I think, I think for me. Um, it's been a little while since I watched it. Yeah, it's, so it's been what three years, yeah, four. But I got I, I gave it two chances. I watched two episodes and then came back and watched two more, and mm -hmm. then I was done. And I think part of it was uh, I think it was mostly the writing. Um, the writing wasn't jiving for me. The characters weren't clicking. Um, I think it might have involved too much jumping between viewpoints. That was, I think, its its biggest flaw. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that they did a pretty good job uh, with a lot of the storytelling on there. Mm -hmm. um, every, every character's individual 
plot was was good. Okay. Um, and uh, our our friend Margaret, yeah. uh, she was one of the writers okay. in the room. Um, I don't think she was ever lead writer on an episode. Um, but yeah, it was very much falling into that kind of Game of Thrones thing where it's like we're gonna tell twenty different stories all at the same time, uh, and we didn't really ever get time to to invest in any of them because there were too many and because I think a lot of the puppets were I- indistinguishable, frankly. Yeah. That that was that was definitely a problem for me. Yeah. I didn't feel like I could bond to them. And I, as a rule, don't like prequels. Mm. Now, I remember watching this and being like, oh, I can see how they're doing this. Um, they're going to make it, um, we, it's dramatic irony. We mm-hmm. know where it's going. The characters don't. but And we don't know how it's going to happen. But I remember like, um, there's like so much of it didn't make a lot of sense world building wise for me. Um, and I'm, I would have to watch again, but I, I remember distinctly watching an episode where I'm like, everyone's like, this is the great mayor that we have to, they're wonderful. And then it's like a Skeksis. He comes on, he's like so evil and mm-hmm. so dis- <laughs> just obvious, like the whole get up for him, like it's like warts all over his face using the whole ugly equals evil thing a little too much. Um, and I'm like, how, this is not a surprise to anyone <laughs> with half a brain that this is oh this is evil this and is they're a heading toward a, and and I'm like well what's the story about then we know that these are the bad guys and it's now no mm-hmm. longer dramatic iron like if this glorious gorgeous beautiful being had come and I'm like oh that's I know what's gonna See, happen that that's yeah. one thing that I wish they had done and. Yeah. And in, in general, I really liked the show. Okay. Um, even before I knew that my friend was one of the writers on it, mm-hmm. I, I thought that it worked. Uh, I thought they took it in some interesting places. I enjoyed watching it. Um, however, yeah. Um, one thing that they were doing, and I feel like they only did it halfway, was yeah. the Skeksis that we see in the movie yeah. are very much the faded glory of a yeah. dying civilization. Exactly. They are clinging to what used to be opulence mm-hmm. and is now just depressing. And I wish that they had done that with the visual look of the Skeksis as well. If they had in the past had actual, you know, more feathers and bright colors yep. and they had looked as glorious as they think they are, then I could have believed, oh yes, these are the people who have ruled civilization forever and everybody reveres them and these stupid Gelflings kind of go along with it, but just straight up showing us the same Skeksis we've already seen didn't really work. And they were mean and they were, yeah. Yeah, and and if they were just secretly evil but visually beautiful, that would have sold Everything and that kind so of, much that better. one kind of killed it for me when that moment happened because I'm like oh anyway um, but love Dark Crystal mm-hmm. um, love Labyrinth yeah um, love uh, Fraggle Rock see Fraggle Rock because mm-hmm. it was on cable yeah uh, I've never really seen huh? uh, every time they would do a special like a Christmas mm-hmm. special or something and there'd be one scene with the Fraggles that was my only experience yeah. with the Fraggles. Um, Labyrinth, you know, I, I, I've said many times that I'm deeply in love with Jennifer Connelly. Yep. That's all started with Labyrinth. I thought that they did such a great job there. Um, but, uh, yeah, Fraggle Rock, I never really saw. Um, so we've got a few minutes left. Uh, the reboot. You liked the reboot a lot. I did. I liked Mm -hmm. the reboot. Yeah. Um, I, it took me a while to get my head around it Mm -hmm. and kind of come to terms with what they were doing. And, and part of it is it it bothered me and it still kind of bothers me on a weird level that there were human main characters to it. Okay. Because humans have always been present but peripheral to the stories being yeah. told. Yeah, this was about a human. Yeah. And his Muppet brother. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, the, the moment in the movie where it gelled for me and I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. I see what they're doing and I love it is when we see uh, Sheldon from Big Bang Theory as the human version of the Muppet brother. Uh, be, first of all, because yeah. it was flawless casting. Yeah. Um, 
in hindsight, they made the Muppet kind of sort of look like him um, in ways where you're able to go, mm-hmm. oh, okay. Um, and then I was like, oh, okay, this this works. Yeah, Prior I, to that, the whole thing just felt like uh, these, these people just wanted to put themselves in a Muppet movie. I liked it for the same reason, not quite on the level of the Lego movie, but doing the same thing where it's a story about a person's but you know, but the the subtext is mm-hmm. this guy grew up loving the Muppets, and now is trying to you know work with the Muppets and bring them the actor himself, bring them to the yeah. forefront. What is his place in that? He's a human, um, and it's kind of the story about nostalgia and the things we love and the nature of reboots. Um, mm-hmm. In the same way, the Lego movie is kind of about playing with Legos. And our connection to them and uh, yeah. things like that. So, and, and it it did come out during that period where yeah. Gen X was desperately grappling with nostalgia as a concept. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. I I had to um suspend my disbelief. Um. Well, that's the wrong term. Uh. It did the one thing that I don't like when legacy sequels do. Mm-hmm. Um. And I understand why they do it, but. The whole, the Muppets broke apart, her Kermit is oh. miserable and mean, um, is not too far a step off from, um, you know, Luke Skywalker uh, gave up on the Jedi and became a recluse and lost mm-hmm. all of his sense of hope for the world, which is not too far off from what we see in a lot of these things. Like, we have a story to tell, there's got to be conflict. So, uh, all your happy endings are done. Yeah. Um those those have been thrown out mm, and these I, people fell apart. I accepted it in the Muppets better than I did in some of the others, but it it irked me. Did you watch any of the modern Muppet shows? They they did yeah, uh, the Muppets reboots. Tonight in the 90s, then they had Muppets Now, I think was the name of their I watched talk the 90s show. one. I didn't watch the um the the Office Muppets as the Office. Yeah. Um Hey Donald, was was there not a TV movie or something where they did another literary property? Um, from I s- what I had seen, I, I s- swear that there was one. Muppets movies. I I hope there was one that I missed, but I they could did. be remembering wrong. What's Wizards it? of Oz. Wizard of Oz. There you go. That's oh, what it was. I remember that one. I didn't see it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I saw it, and it was like, oh, okay. Mm. They got to do something with these characters. Oh wait, we've forgotten something. We've forgotten something very important that the comment section would scream at us for. Okay. Gone Fishing. Weezer. Oh, the Weezers. Isn't it called Gone Fishing? <laughs> yeah, they're on Gone Fishing. Yeah. Uh, which the, the, the music video for that is mm-hmm. an, like an old Muppet Show episode. Yep. Um, yeah. What about Dinosaurs? Did you I did watch, watch that? I watched um, all of Dinosaurs because I remember the pilot and I remember the finale where they all die. <laughs> where they all die in a yeah. meteor. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I loved Dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, I thought they did such a cool job with that. Basically, like all in the family, but mm-hmm. with giant puppets. Yeah. I really liked Dinosaurs. I watched, I watched it pretty consistently all through the 90s when it was on. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, nice work on Dinosaurs. Yeah. There are any other really important Muppet things? That what we have we missed? Sesame to Street. Mention? Um, but Sesame Street. I was yeah. not a Sesame Street kid. Um, you weren't? No. Nope. Everyone our nope. age was a Sesame Street. I kid. wasn't. Um, I was crazy. a. I was watching GI Joe and stuff like that. Not mm, watching okay. um, Sesame Street. I I think for whatever reason, like I didn't watch it when I was when I was a toddler, hmm. and so. Um, so, you know, Elmo and Grouchland so and stuff like, like that. Huge cultural moments like when everyone learned Snuffleupagus was real. I knew I knew that happened because it was in the news and stuff, but yeah. that was when we were like teenagers. Yeah. So I still watched Sesame Street far longer than I developmentally needed to. Okay. Because I was a deeply obsessed Muppets fan. Okay. I think um, like number one, it was it was too young for me. Mm-hmm. Number two, they repeated segments so much that even when I was just above the age group, I'm like, I've seen this like, so I've many seen times. This song before. Why, why do they keep doing this? Uh, so yeah, I, I didn't want to be educated. I wanted to see. <laughs> I want to see giant robots shoot each other. Uh, favorite Muppet. 
Favorite Muppet. Sounds like we both agree favorite Muppet movie is Caper. Yes, Caper is the the best. Uh, Do you have a favorite Muppet? Probably Gonzo. Probably, yeah. Yeah, gun to my head, I might say Gonzo too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Do you have a favorite Muppet show guest? No, because... Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to admit something I've watched. I watched a lot of the Muppet show during an initial run. Mm-hmm. And when it came out on DVDs, Jordo, my brother bought it and we sat down and watched a bunch of the episodes. I couldn't handle the laugh track. Yeah. Um, laugh track sounds so fake to me now in mm-hmm. my ears, um, that it just gets under my skin and I couldn't take it. I, I, I managed to get through like three or four episodes when he watched the whole, the whole yeah. run and I have never watched another episode. M- Muppet show is not a series that. Mm-hmm. wants to be binged yeah it, it, it's too much all at once it doesn't mm-hmm. really hang together no. and i i know the the laugh track is part of the joke in the muppets they're mm-hmm. using it very deliberately but anytime i see one of those old shows and as soon as i become aware of the laugh track it's all i pay attention to um and it becomes like uh fingernails on a chalkboard to me um okay i'm changing my I'm changing my answer i think gonzo Used to be my favorite Muppet, uh huh. But now I I am absolutely Statler and Waldorf. If okay. I can choose the two of them together, because yeah, yeah, they never can. appear individually, yeah. uh, they have become my favorite Muppets. I mean, I also empathize with Kermit a lot, <laughs> um, and so as the leader of a company full yes. of creative weirdos that need to be kept in line. And I'm one of the creative weirdos some of the time, mm-hmm. right? Uh, but you know, I'm the I I am sometimes the straight man, right? Even back at at Leading Edge and yeah. things like that. It's like, all right, I'm the responsible one. Let's make sure this actually happens. Um, <laughs> Let's actually and, produce a magazine. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. Well, hip, hip, hooray. How's that, Ben? Ben. <laughs>